Trump empire introduces the steers to a new life, far from the wide open spaces. A life where one day runs into another, totally by a plentiful supply of water and the delight of appetizing high protein feeds. A cattle feeding complex like this vast layout can be compared to a factory production line with the end product being beef. And each animal is a small factory in itself, turning raw materials into a highly esteemed finished product for human consumption. Integrated with the feedlot is the mill where specialized diets are formulated and mixed. The subject of animal nutrition has won the attention of some of the best research brains in the country, and vast new areas of nutritional science are being opened. The controls exercised by the laboratory will be reflected in the quantity and quality of beef produced in the feedlot. The cattle industry has welcomed new nutritional developments that lead to improved quality beef and an opportunity for better profits. The need for mechanized methods of production and automatic feeding attracted the attention of agricultural engineers and inventors who have increased feeding efficiency while decreasing costs. More efficient methods result in delivering the feed to the cattle in measured quantity at the proper time. Another important step in the production of good beef. Fence line trough feeding provides a uniform feeding method and prevents waste. There's a place at the table for every animal to eat in undisturbed comfort. With various kinds of grain stored in glass-lined steel silos, this completely automated, centralized feeding layout is the culmination of a dream, where, through push-button control, stored feeds are ground, mixed, and transported to the cattle feeding troughs by an auger system. This operation typifies the efforts of feedlot operators to provide better feed at lower cost. Although many processing plants are located near metropolitan areas of consumption, there is a growing trend to locate plants in areas of supply. To ensure quality for the benefit of the consumer, federal inspectors examine and certify each carcass at the packing plant. Beef, like other meats, varies some in quality. Inspection and identification ensures that each carcass is placed in the proper grade. By this means, when the purchaser buys choice beef, he gets choice beef. And if a lesser quality is satisfactory, it is so identified. Grading is based on the qualification of the entire carcass, and labeling is done in such a way that each cut will bear the mark of the grade. This mark is the consumer's guarantee of wholesomeness and quality. Possibly no one has done a better job to cater to the consumer's taste and demands than the packing industry. Consistency of quality, convenience features, and emphasis on tenderness are paramount points followed meticulously by the packing industry. The history of meat packing is a story of steady advancement from its very beginning. Marked progress in the industry results from improvements in mechanization, advances in refrigeration, and important developments in refrigerated transportation. In spotless, temperature-controlled, mechanical refrigerated railroad cars, wholesale cuts of meat, halves, quarters, and special cuts are transported from packer to retailer. Distance is of no concern. Today, a pound of meat travels an average of a thousand miles from the open plains to the kitchen range. To provide more flexible service to the retailer, specially built refrigerated trailer vans are equipped to handle meat and are an important factor in fast, modern transportation. The flexibility of the trailer van at points of origin and delivery 
is supplemented by the dependability of the railroad for the major haul and represents a real improvement in an expedited refrigerated transportation service. A large number of these mechanically refrigerated trailer vans augments Union Pacific's fleet of thousands of refrigerated railroad cars operating under the banner of the Pacific Fruit Express, the acme of dependability in refrigerated transportation.